This is Liverpool, a hard-edged seaport city on the northwest coast of England, better known to millions everywhere today as the beat capital of the world, the authentic home of the Mersey beat. You hear the beat everywhere in Liverpool, even on ferry boats like this one. You know that every southern bill is a Mississippi queen. Down the Mississippi, down in New Orleans, it's it, hey. I'm Bob Willer, host of the Cavern Club in Matthew Street, and I've lived here all my life. That lot up there, well, they're six young gentlemen in the export business, and they're very good at it, too. Their corporate name is the Clayton Squares, and the handcrafted commodity they package for shipment throughout the world is music. Just a few years ago, the four local lads, who call themselves the foremost, were kids on the streets of Liverpool, practicing in garages and cellars in the Dingle District. They played on instruments they made themselves from soap boxes and piano wires. And one day, they found that they were part of a local craze which was destined to become an international institution. Today, they're riding the crest of a musical tidal wave with numbers like Baby Baby. Youngsters who pay their money for these musical cruises expect continuous entertainment to the very end. And they get it, even as the skipper nudges the boat back to the dockside at Liverpool.
Liverpool is a sea town and always has been. It's a well port with ships from Africa and Europe, from Asia and Australia, from practically every other port in the world. It's a city of ship fitters and sail makers and the painted over ghosts of dockside hotels. It's also a town with double decker buses. And what better way to see the sights than with a local young lady named Tiffany? Sometimes I will, then again I think I won't. Sometimes I will, then again I think I won't. Sometimes I do, then again I think I don't. I looked at my watch, it was 9.31. Down there, the Cavern Club, the cauldron in which the right musical elements regrouped, fused and caught the imagination of the universe. It's really just a cellar here in Matthew Street, a tumble of brick in a cramped and twisted part of town. But from that basement, the Mersey beat boiled over and covered two hemispheres. And the flame is still turned up high, as we shall see in just a moment. This is the cavern in Matthew Street, Liverpool. This is where the Beatles started. Jerry and the Pacemakers, Cilla Black, and many of the other top pop music stars who are now known throughout the world. The current attraction is the Clayton Squares. I'm on the old spell, just like a man in a dream. But I know darn well that I don't stand a chance. So I change my heart, baby, set me free. I change my heart, cause you don't care about me. Such a misery. You don't care about your beans for me. Unchain 
such a launching pad for top musical groups. Maybe it's because here, playing comfortably amongst youngsters from this town, they've been able to isolate that thing, that quality, that flavor, that has made them just that little bit different from the crowd. What is it about the Clayton Squares? Bounce? Spirit? Whatever it is, it's hard at work on this number they call, Tell Me, How Do You Feel? How do you feel when your baby's loving your best friend? I wanna know. I wanna know. I wanna know. Tell me how do you feel when your baby's loving your best friend? I wanna know. Oh yeah. What well, right? Do you feel like going crazy or do you feel you've always been? I wanna know. I wanna know. I wanna know. Tell me how do you feel? I like wanna treat another guy. I wanna know. Oh yeah. What well, Tell me how would you feel? I like wanna treat another guy. I wanna know. Oh yeah. I wanna know. If you feel good on the inside, you're a much better man than I. I wanna know. I wanna know. This is the courtyard of the town hall in Castle Street. Those are the hideaways, and there's no more smashing group in town. They have one singer who's Chinese in extraction. A good case for the diversity which is Liverpool. The bass guitarist was born in Dallas, Texas, which makes him technically as American as their song, Boom Boom. Uh, house. Boom, 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 boom. to see you strut up and down the floor when you're talking to me. Talk. Well, you whisper in my ear and you tell me that you love me. You know, I like it like that. It knocks me out right off my feet.
what it's like here. Liverpudlians watching other Liverpudlians making Liverpudlian music. Places that owe something to Ireland and to Wales and to China. Listening to music that owes a debt to Africa and to rural America. Well, you will spend my ear. And you tell me that you love me. You know, like, like that. It knocks me out. Right off my feet. Oh, well, the Beatles had a tremendous Liverpool homecoming. The whole thing centered around the town hall where the Beatles were officially honored. The then Lord Mayor, Louis Catherine, received the lads from the balcony over the main town hall chambers. The police were out in force for whatever good it did, but the roughest part of it all still lay ahead when the boys had to make their way to the theatre where the film was premiering. It was Liverpool's way of telling the Beatles just how she felt about the new chapter of the group had added to the city's history. And so Liverpool, once more, scored headlines right round the world. The Beatles had it made, but everyone who followed knew that they had a long, tough hill to climb. Getting no satisfaction from the judge But I'm going to the FBI to push my grudge If they give me no consolation I'm gonna take it to the United Nations I'm gonna see that in your back on my 30 days Our 30 days Our 30 days I'm gonna see that you come back in 30 days Give me no consolation While I'm going to the United Nations I'm gonna see that you're back home in 30 days How to make yourself stand out from the crowd? Some tried long blonde wigs Others dressed as undertakers and rode motorbikes And some... Well, you stick around and see Liverpool's singular contribution to musical horror, a group that's reached right out of this world for a gimmick that they hope would take them right to the top. This cemetery, a famous Liverpool landmark, is also the favorite haunting ground of one of Liverpool's most unique musical groups, the Mersey Monsters. Coming by your side You better take it easy, baby Or you go away Listen to me, baby What I've got to say, you better Watch your step Oh, yeah Watch your step Oh, oh Watch your step Oh, yeah Watch your step But keep your eyes off my girl Or I'll be coming by your side You better 
From the cemetery, it's only a brief ride out to the airport. Now, a few years ago, that would have been an item of only mild interest to the musical Mersey scene. But through their music, these youngsters have been able to open the world to themselves. Take the Foremost, for instance. They played all over the world now, and they usually bring back a souvenir of sorts from wherever they've been. I wonder if anyone will ever notice him on the streets of Liverpool. As you can see, Liverpool is a very busy town. The population exploded up here a long time ago, and there's no sign that it will ever be any way different. There are people here living practically on top of one another in row houses that make even their occupants start counting from the corner. There have always been a lot of people in Liverpool coming from a lot of places with a lot of audacious ideas and ways of doing things. Naturally, there are a lot of things that need talking over. So where do they do it? Right here, the local. The local pub serves as a town meeting house for the neighborhood you happen to live in, even if you happen to live in a Chinese neighborhood. This too is Liverpool. Chinese faces, Scouse accents, in an English pub under the watchful eye of a lady pub keeper who is definitely Irish. Now, Scouse, you hear that word all the time here. Basically, it means a sort of meat stew. It also means the linguistic stew we've managed to make of the English language. Lastly, Scouse means us, ourselves. Now, here's a house full of Scouse with a difference. This is Gregson's Well. <laughs> Spinners are known here. They're very closely identified with Liverpool, which is probably one of the reasons why they've had such a success with a song which is really a love song to a city. A city which one would hardly call white as snow and dewy fresh. The song is called Dirty Old Town. <laughs> Gasworks cross dreamed a dream by the old canal kissed my girl by the factory wall dirty old
going to make a good shop at Shining steel tempered in the fire We'll chop you down like an old dead tree Down by the docks, my religion was Catholic, occupation hard knocks. At stealing from lorries, I was adept, and under old overcoats, we always slept. In my Liverpool home, in my Liverpool home, we speak with an accent exceedingly rare. Meet under a statue exceedingly rare. And if you want a cathedral, we've got one to spare in the Liverpool home. When I grew up, I met Bridie McCann. She says, you're not much, but I'm needing a man. Cause I want 15 kids and a house out in speech. Well, the spirit was willing, but the flesh it was weak. In the Liverpool home. If you want a cathedral, we've got one to spare in the Liverpool home. Mr. Hitler threw at us everything that he had. When the smoke and the dust had all cleared from the air, thank God, said the old man, the pier had still there. In the Liverpool home, in the Liverpool home, we speak with an accent exceedingly rare. Meet under a statue exceedingly fair. And if you want to come, No. 
Before any of the younger generation in Liverpool was born, there was a war. They know it, they feel it. Its scars still surround them in this town. Here and there, there remains a charred reminder. But nowhere does the war show a plainer hand than here in Bow Place in the parish of St. Luke. The bomb that struck this church in the early days of World War II left a more enduring memento than ever it intended. The people of Liverpool cleaned away the debris, landscaped the area, but left St. Luke's itself as the bombers had left it. If you were to look down the road a bit, you'd see bombed out houses and children playing in the dust of what remains. Souvenirs of a war that came and went when their parents were youngsters. What is Liverpool, really? It's more of a who than a what when you come down to it. It's people who work hard for what they get, and they don't get any great amount for the work they do. You could say it's a poorish city, but you'd be missing the life of it. It's an odd place, with signs like L. Clay Gold Beater and arthritic alleyways that curl and writhe and jolt up against brick walls without giving you proper notice. It's diversion, too. It's Sunday and boat trips on the Mersey. Well, you can't judge an apple by looking at the tree. Can't judge a honey by looking at the bee. You can't judge a sister by looking at the brother. Can't judge a book by looking at the cover. Apart from being excuses for the local beat addicts to get a little airing without being too far from their favorite sounds, these trips are aboard the Royal Iris serve to get us across here to New Brighton, which is just up from Birkenhead and Wallasey. What's over there? Well, there's amusement over there and candy floss and toffee, and as if Liverpudlians didn't get enough of it on the Lancashire side of the Mersey, there's humanity. Others of their own species by the job lot. And down among the seasiders, as well as the donkeys, which are fixtures on the New Brighton beach, today there's a very special attraction. There's Tiffany. And when you try to change the subject, does it make him mad? Does he say he's only being curious and make out less it will make him furious? Yeah, some things are better left unsaid. Take it from me, some 
Tiffany would be hard to leave on any beach, but the Royal Iris has a date to keep in Liverpool. If you look across the river, you will see the Liver Building, the landmark that is Liverpool. On its twin steeples are perched two gigantic Liver Birds. They're mythical, and they look something like pelicans with bad dispositions. Somehow they've managed to make a name for themselves in Merseyside folklore. And the local belief is that Liverpool took its name from the Liver Birds. That means that it's time for the Royal Iris to be heading back for town.
earliest known mention of the Mersey occurs in a deed dated 1002 in the reign of Saxon King Ethelred. In the deed, Wulfric, the Earl of Mercia, bequeathed the district to his heirs. Eight years later, poor Wulfric, he died fighting the Danes at Ipswich. Ah, but maybe that was all for the best. For the Dark Ages, he was a definite progressive. But one question remains. Could poor Wulfric find happiness here today with the throne rooms of Liverpool occupied by crowds of teenagers armed with electric guitars and drum kits? This is Bob Wooler. Thanks for coming to Liverpool. Come to